It's time for you all to wake up and shift your paradigm. This world is the kingdom of darkness and we are living in its last days. It won't be long before the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. The heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat and the earth and everything therein shall be burnt up. The Luciferian elite have been setting up the new world order and now they've established the globalist beast system for the rise of that wicked one and revealing of the man of sin who comes after the workings of Satan. Don't take my word for it. Read the Bible and you'll know that perilous times shall come in the last days. And we are in the last days. Sixty years ago, when the Russians beat us into space, we didn't deny Sputnik was up there. We didn't argue about the science or shrink our research and development budget. We built a space program almost overnight, and 12 years later, we were walking on the moon. Uh, Roger, 11. We've been, uh, I've just been vectored to another monitor, and uh, sure enough, the Browns are coming in a lot more distinctly on the uh, item 4 that we have up on our uh, screen in the control center. Over. Okay, uh, world, hold on to your hat. I'm going to turn you upside down. I guess you're about the only person around that doesn't have TV coverage of the scene. It's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. <laughs> a sound stage in New Mexico. That's not... That never happened. Let each man say what he deems truth, and let truth itself be commended unto God. God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together in one place, the dry land appeared, and so, and God called the dry land, what? Earth, earth, earth. Now go to verse 14. God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven, divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs, seasons, for days and years, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light to the earth. And it was so, and God made two great lights. All right, what are these lights? You know what? Sun and the moon. 
Did you just read in your Bible that the earth is older than the sun? Yes, you did. Yes, you did. You just read in your Bible that the earth was here before the sun. Right? You certainly did. Now, that's a big deal. Now, here's what you get into. There's two big words I'm going to throw out here to you. I just want to give them to you. And don't you think about it. Geocentric and heliocentric. So what does that mean? It's just a big word. You pay for the education. Let the folks know you've been school. Here's what it means. Geocentric means that the Earth is the center of the universe. Heliocentric means that the sun is the center of the universe, known universe, our solar system, and everything revolves around the sun. With a geocentric view, the sun and everything revolves around the earth, and the earth is fixed where it is. Now, here's the thing. My little, my little uh, excursion into this has revealed that most of the people that believe in a geocentric view of the earth also believe that the earth is flat. I'm going to throw some things out there for you this morning. I love debate. If what you believe is real and you really believe it and you have a foundation for that belief, you should be able to defend it. I have no respect for somebody who says, well, I believe this and that and you don't have anything to back it up. I'm not saying I believe in a flat earth. No. But there are some interesting points they make. Let me give you one. How many understand if the earth is a ball out here in space, then it has a curvature to it, right? It has a curvature. It's going to have a curvature. You're going to see a curvature. Now, what's going to be more apparent is the higher you get, the more you're going to be able to see the curvature, right? In other words, you have to get to a point in space where you're able to look down on the earth and see the curvature of the earth. And therefore, prove without a doubt, prove without a doubt that the earth is round. Now, this gets into the scientific geology or geography or whatever they are who measure things like this. But did you know that in Lake Michigan, Chicago, Illinois sits on the western bank of Lake Michigan? I mean, I don't know that. Chicago, Illinois, good sized town. At one time, Chicago was the second largest town in America. Chicago, Illinois. It sits right there, it butts right up again, Lake Michigan. Right up against it, Lake Michigan. You can go 40 miles, 40 miles across the peninsular part of Michigan. I forget the name of the town over there, and it's in another state. And you can get out there on a boat 40 something miles away from Chicago and look across Lake Michigan, and you can see the skyline of Chicago. A meteorologist was talking about what he called a, what is that thing, a mirage, a mirage, a phenomenon of a mirage. That makes sense, doesn't it? That makes sense for the curvature of the earth. How many follow me here now? So he was trying to explain to people, how can we 40 miles away see and Chicago? what you're seeing here is a mirage. And, and he was explaining to them how that the light was coming up and bouncing back down and it was a mirage. You weren't really seeing Chicago by looking straight at it. You were seeing a reflection of Chicago through the, through the clouds and the atmosphere and whatever else is up there. So these guys up there, they got in this boat. And <laughs> you've always got somebody like this. <laughs> they hooked up their cameras. They had to wait for a certain day to come clear enough because 40 miles is a long way to see, folks. And they got in their boat, and they hooked up their cameras, and they focused in on Chicago, and you could barely see it, barely, because of the haze and the distance. But they kept their cameras trained on Chicago, Illinois, and they began to cross Lake Michigan. And do you know something? Nothing ever changed except Chicago got clearer. Now, if you're following me in all of this, here's the point. If the Earth is curved, they should not have been able to see Chicago 40 miles away, is that right? I'm not saying I believe it, but it makes me think. How do they see Chicago? Airline pilots, when they go up, flight level, let's say 3-0, 3-5, 
in other words, 30,000 or 35,000 feet in the air. Let's say they're up there at 35,000 feet. As they rise in that aircraft, did you know what amazing thing happens? The horizon rises. Now, if the horizon was curved, would it rise or would it fall? <laughs> so you believe in the flat earth? No, but I believe in listening to what they got to say. You see, here's their point. Their point is that God made the earth and he made everything else as it relates to the earth. And the earth is the center of God's plan for man. And that it is here the issue of sin and salvation is settled. And that uh, because of that, the earth is primary and is of primary importance in God's creation. In plain words, you're not going to find anything out there that is nearly as important as what you've got going on here. Now, as far as that's concerned, I go with them 100%. I'm going to read a little more about the flat earth. Here's why. I may never believe the earth is flat, but I may learn a lot of things from it that may help me understand my Bible in ways that I could never understand it before. The design of this deeply hidden plot has been to change the perception of the masses regarding the authority of the Bible, the correct shape of the earth, the layout of the universe, and the Creator's position in it. This change in perception has prepared minds for the overwhelming delusion to come upon the world under the first woe, the fifth trumpet, prophesied in Revelation chapter 9. This delusion will be a demonic attack under the pretext of an alien invasion. Reportedly, Vladimir Lenin observed, a lie told often enough becomes the truth. This quote is discovered within the belief of most. The Earth is a sphere. It spins through space while orbiting the sun hurtling thousands of kilometers an hour inside our Milky Way galaxy. So ingrained is this belief, if one speaks of the words flat earth, listeners snicker. The mental reflex of a flat plane from which a person might fall into an infinite space creates this disrespect. A globe earth because unproven is pseudoscience, yet believed worldwide and passed from generation to generation, and any who question it is mocked and ridiculed. If I say that the world is round and someone else says it's flat, that's worth reporting. But you might also want to report on a bunch of scientific evidence that seems to support the notion that the world is round. We don't have time for a meeting of the Flat Earth Society. They, 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 they must have been founding members of, of the Flat Earth Society. They, they would not have believed that the world was round. I looked around at this flat, beautiful land, and all this sun, I just, I, I, I asked the question, how, how many 
days of Sunday you get a year, 320. That's pretty good. And in case there are any conspiracy theorists out there, how would you prove to us that you're Based in zero on, gravity? Out of the humility Jeez. to, I don't understand. I, I, look, I'm the one who's having humility. I'm saying we should have a debate look, here. You guys are saying Steve, that the debate is How about we just listen to Steve, the scientists? I I mean, that's really what excited. I'm saying. Listen so, to the scientists. I, I absolutely have the humility have to believe humility. people who but know you, things no, you because don't. because it's like people like you guys who are saying, no, we can't have a debate on this. The debate is over. At some point, the debate has to be. But you're the one should have some humility. I say, wait a minute, there are a lot of people who disagree do still debate whether the earth is flat? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm asking you. No, you're, saying that, not. you're saying every debate should go on. That's not how science works. At right. some point, you reach its consensus, and you debate the next issue. The next issue being, how do we deal all with climate scientists change? are wrong all the time. For millennia, well-educated people believed the earth was flat and placed at the center of the universe enclosed there with a protective covering. In the early 16th century, Nikolai Copernicus introduced a different model of the universe in which the sun lay at the center and the earth revolved around it. Copernicus' heliocentric model is taught today while the earlier geocentric model has been utterly rejected. Less than a hundred years later, Galileo was persecuted by the Catholic Church for promoting Copernicus theory and forced to recant his beliefs and spend the last years of his life under house arrest. Galileo's persecution for promoting heliocentrism is surprising, as the Catholic Church initially supported Copernicus theories. Copernicus' theory of a heliocentric universe was well known at the upper strata of the Catholic Church in his lifetime. While he preferred his theories published after his death, he ultimately agreed to publish his manuscripts on the persistent appeals of high church officials. Catholics were not first to reject Copernicus' views, for they themselves admit Opposition was first raised against the Copernican system by Protestant theologians for biblical reasons. The Catholic Church advanced Copernicus' heliocentric model, constantly urging him to spread it abroad, together with other theories that opposed the sacred scriptures. The necessity to change public conception from an accurate belief in a flat, enclosed earth to a false belief grew slowly. With sapient baby steps, the whole world would become amenable to the final delusion of an alien invasion under the first woe. The Catholic hierarchy had the perfect opportunity to lay groundwork for a global deception to culminate in this earth's final generation. This deception required a globe Earth spinning throughout the vast reaches of space, space inhabited by aliens and other sentient life forms. These contrivances created doubt in the Bible, putting science ahead of Scripture, which advises mankind the Earth is enclosed and unmoving. They also place the Creator far away from His creation by presenting a universe unimaginably vast. In the table talk of Martin Luther, the great reformer is quoted as having said, there is talk of a new astrologer who wants to prove that the earth moves and goes round instead of the sky, the sun, the moon, just as if somebody were moving in a carriage or a ship might hold that he was sitting still and at rest while the earth and the trees walked and moved. But that is how things are nowadays. When a man wishes to be clever, he must needs invent something special. And the way he does it, he must needs be the best. The fool wants to turn the whole art of astronomy upside down. However, as Holy Scripture tells us, so did Joshua bid the sun to stand still and not the earth. In his lectures on the book of Genesis, Luther said, We Christians must be different from the philosophers in the way we think about the causes of these things. And if some are beyond our comprehension, 
like those before us concerning the waters above the heavens. We must believe them and admit our lack of knowledge rather than either wickedly deny them or presumptuously interpret them in conformity with our own understanding. The great reformer Jean Calvin, also known as John Calvin, called Copernicus a dreamer who has a spirit of bitterness and contradiction, reprove everything and prevent the order of nature. We will see some who are so de deranged, Calvin said, not only in religion, but who in all things reveal their monstrous nature that they will say that the sun does not move and that it is the earth which shifts and turns. When we see such minds, we must indeed confess that the devil possesses them and that God sets them before us as mirrors in order to keep us in his fear. So it is with all who argue out of pure malice and that happily make a show of their imprudence. When they are told this is hot, they will reply, no, it is plainly cold. When they are shown an object is black, they will say, no, it is white, and vice versa. Just like the man who said that the snow is black, for although it is perceived and known all to be white, yet he clearly wished to contradict the fact. And so it is that they are madmen who try to change the natural order, and even to dazzle eyes and benumb the senses. With the biblical geocentric model rejected, a new explanation was required. A globe Earth, its orbit of the Sun for millions of miles every year, illimitable realms of space with billions of galaxies, each composed of billions of stars with worlds innumerable. All this became necessary to explain the new heliocentric model of the universe, and mankind over a short time lost his divine significance. Thereafter was created an environment within which the writings of Charles Darwin found a receptive audience. Once science showed the Bible wrong, the disparager then diverged from her religious guise altogether. Anything suddenly became possible. There was nothing above question, including how the Earth seemed to appear in the vastness of space with all else and the existence of extraterrestrials. The Big Bang Theory is, today, the leading explanation about how the universe began. At its simplest, it talks about the universe as we know it, starting with a small singularity, then inflating over the next 13.8 billion years to the cosmos that we know today. Priest Andrew Pinsent holds advanced degrees in theology from the Pontifical Gregorian University in Rome, as well as a doctorate in particle physics from Oxford. In January 2015, he wrote, Being both a priest and a former particle physicist at CERN, I am often asked to give talks on faith and science. Quite often, young people ask me the following question. How can you be a priest and believe in the Big Bang? To which I am delighted to respond. We invented it. Or more precisely, priest Georges Lemaitre invented the theory that is today called the Big Bang and everyone should know about him. The author of the Big Bang Theory was none other than the Jesuit trained priest Georges Lemaitre. On October 28, 2014, Sarah Kerr reported. Speaking to members of the Pontifical Academy of Science, the Pope said it is possible to believe in both, insisting God was responsible for the Big Bang from which all life evolved. L'inizio del mondo non è opera del caos che deve a un altro la sua origine ma deriva direttamente da un principio supremo che crea per amore. Il Big Bang, che oggi si pone all'origine del mondo, non contraddice l'intervento creatore divino, ma lo esige. L'evoluzione nella natura non contrasta con la nozione di creazione, perché l'evoluzione presuppone la creazione degli esseri che si evolvono. Follow from cause to effect. 1. 
Without a globe Earth circling the Sun through the far reaches of space, we do not have the Big Bang. 2. Without the Big Bang, we do not have evolution. 3. Without evolution, we are more likely to accept creation as an act of intelligent design by a divine creator. The Roman Catholic Church does, in fact, accept evolution. Acceptance of evolution and its integral law of survival of the fittest gave rise to the bloodbaths of the 20th century in which millions lost their lives. Numerous researchers have established incontrovertible connections between the Vatican and the Nazi Party. Regardless of the level of collaboration between the Vatican and the Nazis, what happened after World War II is even more significant. Operation Paperclip smuggled hundreds of Nazi scientists, including top SS officers on trial for war crimes, into the United States for use in America's Cold War space race. One of these Nazi Party members, Werner von Braun, was promoted to head up NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center. Under Operation Paperclip, some 350 German scientists and former intelligence agents were given visas and well-paying jobs. Many of these scientists had questionable pasts. Braun himself had been an active member of the Nazi Party, and his colleague at NASA, Dr. Hubertus Struggled, a specialist in aviation medicine had performed experiments on concentration camp inmates. The purpose of this massive and illegal undertaking appears to have been for the establishment of a worldwide authority on all things relating to space and astronomy. NASA became the public face of space. It has long acted as a front providing an unsuspecting world with pseudoscience legitimized by the backing of the U.S. government. NASA is its own monopoly. It controls the dissemination of public information on astronomy while hiding facts it does not want the public to know. While many countries and universities have observatories, always it is the statements, photographs, and discoveries of NASA that make the news headlines. Do aliens even exist, and how, how would we know? 
Well, the Kepler satellite currently orbiting in outer space has identified about 50 50 planets that seem very much Earth-like. In fact, every week we discover another Jupiter-sized planet in outer space. With NASA in charge of the flow of astronomical information to the public, it appears the Vatican has remained a central player in the truly accurate astronomy not being released to the public. For hundreds of years, the Vatican has owned more telescopes and observatories than any organization private university or government. NASA and the Vatican jointly own Lucifer, the world's largest binocular telescope. According to the official Vatican website, the Vatican Observatory is one of the oldest astronomical institutes in the world. And yet, where are the photographs? Where are the news releases of the latest discoveries? Precisely what have the Jesuit astronomers been doing for the last 500 years? Only they know. NASA's public release of information promoting the idea of an expanding, thus ever larger universe of incomprehensible size has led to the supposition there must be alien life on other planets. After all, if the Big Bang produced life on Earth, why couldn't intelligent life have evolved elsewhere? And we've been hearing a lot lately about dozens of other habitable planets being discovered. And today, NASA is hosting a discussion panel about these habitable planets that are just a short, you know, 10, 20 or so light years away from us. So RT correspondent Megan Lopez joined us earlier from NASA, and I first asked her if we were close to finding another life form in our solar system. They need to figure out what type of activity that is. But with the organic materials, it means that we could find a footprint of Martian life that used to exist. And if there's plant life that used to exist, it could mean that there's other life that used to exist. So scientists at NASA are very excited. They just unveiled this, and it presents a new puzzle to, to, to sort of solve for them. Right now, we only can fly in Earth orbit. That's the farthest that we can go. And this new system that we're building is going to allow us to go beyond and hopefully take humans into the solar system to explore. So the moon, Mars, asteroids, there's a lot of destinations that we could go to, and we're building these building block components in order to allow us to do that eventually. I'd go to the moon in a nanosecond. Uh, the problem is we don't have the technology to do that anymore. We used to, but we uh, destroyed that technology, and uh, it's a painful process to build it back again. But going to Mars should be uh, one of the next series of steps that humans do. The first step should be going back to the moon for a number of technical uh, reasons and exploration reasons. And then after that, Mars, maybe a uh, high orbit in uh, Venus atmosphere, maybe going to Europa. There's all kinds of uh, targets to go to places of interest in our solar system. The, the only limit to a human future is in our own imaginations. It could be flat, could not be flat. There could, only, there could be 12 continents. How would you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's a matter of how we draw it up. But I feel like with the world, with the Earth, when you stand back and you look at the horizon, you can see curvature. You can actually see it, unlike a dinosaur or something. Yeah, or if you fly in one direction, you'll come back around, which is which in a flat world probably would not happen. That is true. That is true. But these guys don't go around. They go to Cleveland, and then they go to... <laughs> With me now, Bill Nye, CEO of the Planetary Society, and of course, the science guy. Good to have you, Bill. Good to see you, Craig. Todd Aiken says believing in evolution requires faith. Paul Brown says it's a, it's a lie from the pit of hell. It lies straight from the pit of hell. What goes through your mind when you hear things like that? Well, first of all, uh, I, as a science educator, have failed. I failed. No. Evolution was discovered. It's not something people made up. It was discovered, and uh, the evidence for it is astonishing. It's overwhelming.
Now, one thing I really want your generation to embrace is that the Earth is a closed system. We cannot leave the Earth. There's no place to go. There's no place to throw your trash. And I wouldn't be surprised if maybe not you, but your kids develop ways to mine our landfills. We throw away so much valuable stuff right now, especially raw materials. I may be wrong, of course. Always may be wrong. So how, do we know, how do we know the Earth is not flat? We don't. It's flat. Okay. <laughs> okay. Glad we that. On Huffo. <laughs> so, no, 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 here so, it is. Here it is. Um, if you are small, as we are as humans, and that is the entirety of your, and that is the source of the, of your understanding of the world in which you live, then of course the world looks flat. That's not any different from being a child watching television and, and is presuming that the people you see on TV know you. They don't know me. Well, if you're a little child, you think they do know you because you are the center of your own universe. And to mature out of that is very hard, not only when we grow up as humans, but also as we grow up as a civilization. To realize that the Earth is not flat and that it's round means you're not in the center of the Earth. Some of the earliest civilizations we have records of were in the Middle East, okay? And uh, that whole area is called the Mediterranean. Well, Mediterranean translates to Middle Earth. The people lived there were sure they were in the middle of the Earth. That can only be true if you think Earth is flat. Well, we have many lines of evidence to show that Earth is round, including Apollo photos of the round Earth. Okay. The only reason I reference that, of course, is you've gotten to kind of a, a battle on Twitter about that a while back, early, earlier this year. Yeah, I, it, it, it wasn't a fair battle when you know you're right and you know the other person is just completely regressed in their thinking. Uh, I only jumped in because there must have been an overlap in the Venn diagram of the followers that I have on Twitter and the followers that B.O.B. had on Twitter. And I don't know how big that overlap is, but it was sufficient for people to come to me and say, you know, B.O.B. is saying Earth is flat. you got to stop him. Say something. Save him from himself. And I'm saying, well, ooh, why, why, why? I'm looking, and there they were. And so, and I, I would have left it alone because I don't have time for this. Until I saw him saying, I use physics and math to show that Earth is flat. Not those are fighting words. Okay? If, if he says he's invoking physics and math, let me, let me see where he claimed to do so. I looked where he claimed to do so, and it, it was profoundly ignorant of formulas and physics related to the physics of establishing the size of the Earth. Now, I don't mind that people don't know things. That's just plain old ignorance. Ignorance shouldn't be thought of as a bad word. Right? Ignorant just simply means you don't know. But if you don't know and you have the power of influence over others, that's dangerous. If you don't know and you don't know that you don't know, that is particularly dangerous. And so, so I, I, and I don't blame B.O.B. and I, don't, I blame the educational system that can graduate someone as, into adulthood who cannot tell the difference between what is and is not true about this world. Sam? Yeah. I can't see it. Oh, sorry, sorry. No, that's all right. You see oh, like yeah. the bright light wow. back there? Incredible. Wow. Wow. You still see it? That yep, yep. Awesome. It's in the camera. Yeah. Look how fast that's going, man. Look how fast. Are you getting enough video? Yep. Yeah, folks, the shuttle's going off the right side of the aircraft right now. Those of you on the right side of the aircraft, you can see the space wow. shuttle. Wow. If you on the left side of the aircraft, you can probably see people on the right side of the aircraft looking at the space shuttle.
we don't want to have anybody complain because we were late. See, so y'all got to see that. <laughs> ah, then you can complain because we were late. Got it? All right. Drinks are on the house, too. <laughs> the trajectory of the space shuttle. It doesn't go straight up. It always goes in a curve um, and out to sea. The point is that they, they actually go horizontal. The space shuttle goes horizontal. It never goes any further up. It goes horizontal, um, very, very low down in the, in the atmosphere um, because it, lets, it drops its um, external tank um, while it's still in the atmosphere. Um, so, you know, it's, it's still in the atmosphere while it's uh, horizontal, so it never gets any higher. And it goes out of sight, not because it goes too high, because it goes too far downrange. Um, and it seems that uh, nobody's ever on the space shuttle. And the proof of that is the Challenger disaster. Um, in, uh, I believe it's 1986, the Challenger exploded just after takeoff and killed seven astronauts. But it turns out that six of the astronauts are still alive and uh, most of them are using their original names. Um, and you, you, know, uh, you can find pictures of them, they're, they're using the same names and they're, they're doing ordinary jobs now. Now, one thing I really want your generation to embrace is that the Earth is a closed system. We cannot leave the Earth. There's no place to go. So where is the edge? Who's to say that there is an edge, and why assume there is one? Is it because when we are introduced to the idea of a flat earth, it's always depicted like this? In the currently most accepted model, Antarctica is not a continent, but a 360 degree land mass made up of ice that holds the oceans within. When we look at a Gleason's map from 1892 that states at the top, that it's scientifically and practically correct, as is. We see this Antarctic ice rim. The Gleason's map is basically an azimuthal equidistant projection, which can be traced back to the year 1000. The AE map is also an official map of the United States Geological Survey, the USGS and the official logo for the United Nations. The oldest known globe in the world is from 1492. This is something you need to keep in mind because many people argue that the azimuthal equidistant map is just a flattened out version of the globe, when in fact the globe is just a rounded version of this true world flat map. If the flat map came first and it has the ability to convert into a globe without any problems whatsoever, then that should tell you a little bit about how this globe deception was achieved. Now, back to if there is an edge or not. There is no proof that there is an edge past the Antarctic ice wall, but it is speculated by many that perhaps the plane that we live on is either extremely expansive or it's possibly endless. In these two scenarios, it would be logically assumed that more land is being hidden from the general public.
In a 1954 interview with Admiral Richard E. Byrd, an American naval officer who specialized in exploration, he had this to say. But strangely enough, there is left in the world today an area as big as the United States that's never been seen by a human being. And that's beyond the pole on the other side of the South Pole from middle America. And it's, uh, I think it's quite astonishing that there should be an area as big as that unexplored. Implying that there is more land past Antarctica. If that uninhabited land was on a globe, it would be in the Indian Ocean. A recent discovery of an old Buddhist map in a newspaper from 1907 seems to support the idea of a vast plain with much more land. Where does the sun go if the earth is flat? Well, the sun neither rises nor sets, but travels in a clockwise circuit from east to west and only appears to rise and set due to perspective. The sun disappears at the vanishing point of human perspective on the horizon where the ground meets the sky. And since the sun is not 93 million miles away, I repeat, not 93 million miles away, but much closer and smaller, the light emanating from the sun only illuminates about half of the flat plane at once as it makes its daily journey. What's underneath the flat earth? This is obviously an unanswerable question since the assumed edge has never been known to be reached. But many people suppose that whether the earth is round or flat, that either way, it still must be floating in the middle of outer space. But the idea of outer space goes out the window with the round earth theory. Many religious texts support an immovable earth that has its foundations on which it is laid and its pillars by which it is supported. We simply don't know, but we do know that the earth is obviously fixed in place as we can tell by our everyday experience of non-movement. What we see in the skies above are illuminated objects making circles around us just as it appears. Whatever this place may be, it's the center of all we survey. Some say that the earth is the floor of the universe. In the ancient Hebrew conception of the universe, we are surrounded by the waters above and the waters below, known as the Great Deep. The deepest hole ever drilled into the earth was a total of about seven and a half miles. The very core of the earth is nothing more than wild speculation, if not another malicious lie. So what's under the earth? That remains a mystery to us all. But another thing that you can research is what's inside the Earth. Multi-billion dollar deep underground military bases known as DUMBs. D-U-M-Bs, right? What about ships and boats disappearing over the horizon? This is also due to human perspective. They don't go over the horizon, they go into the horizon moving beyond the limit of our vision and past the vanishing point. But the ships and boats are easily brought back into view with a pair of binoculars, a telescope, and any camera with a good zoom lens. A great question to ask yourself is why can't we see noticeable curvature from 120,000 feet up? 
but many people claim that the supposed curvature can be seen from the ground by watching boats. It doesn't make sense. And what about all of the pictures of the Earth? They are all clearly computer-generated images. They claim this picture from Apollo 17 in 1972 is real, and they also claim that the 2015 epic Earth picture is real. But NASA employee Robert Simmon gave us a glimpse of how they do it when he shared his experience of creating the Blue Marble 2.0 in 2002. He is now called Mr. Blue Marble, He was interviewed and on record stating, the last time anyone took a photograph from above low Earth orbit that showed an entire hemisphere, one side of the globe, was in 1972 during Apollo 17. NASA's Earth Observing System, EOS, satellites were designed to give a checkup of Earth's health. By 2002, we finally had enough data to make a snapshot of the entire Earth, so we did. In 2002, Blue Marble 2.0, NASA's Rob Simmons made this. Simmons' job is... It's primarily taking data and making pictures out of it. That's what this is, a composite of data sets from several different instruments translated into a picture. So we actually had to take clouds out. They stashed the clouds for later, went onto the ocean. That came from an instrument that measures phytoplankton in the sea. Where it was low, I colored it dark blue because they're low mostly in mid-oceans. And then where it was a little bit higher, it was like a little bit brighter green. Then add the clouds back in. There's a small problem with it because there's a very slight gap in between each orbit. So some of those are painted on. It is photoshopped, but it's it's has to be. Then? There was another layer to sort of simulate the atmosphere. And then there's this little bright spot. It's called the specular highlight. So it's the reflection of sunlight off of water. Those are the pieces, but you can't just slap them all together. It just didn't look realistic. It looks kind of flat, or the clouds are sort of too see-through. So I just take Command-Z a lot. There's artistry to creating the world. What I imagine it to be. Um, Unfortunately, I'm not an astronaut. (laughs) I've never been to space. But I've looked at these images over and over again, trying to sort of get the essence of it. It is photoshopped, but it's, it's, has to be. It is photoshopped, but it's, it's, has to be. It is photoshopped, but it's, it's, has to be. It is photoshopped, but it's, it's, has to be. Why are all the other planets round then? When you compare amateur footage done with professional grade cameras and compare it to NASA's official images of planets and stars, it's clear that NASA images are all computer generated, no different than the photos of Earth. What have become known as planets are round lights that seem to be set over the flat Earth. The so-called planets and stars are not what we have been told they are, and comparing luminous objects that you see in the sky to the Earth under your feet is very ineffective for actually proving the supposed rotundity of the Earth. Since there are no actual photographs of the Earth, and motion has never been experienced or proven, it would seem more logical for one to assume that We are on a flat motionless plane, and everything we see in the heavens revolves around us. What about satellites and GPS? As crazy as it may sound, satellites are a hoax. Have you ever wondered why there are never any damaged or fallen satellites? and why there are no satellite malfunctions due to constant heating and cooling. It's weird they don't melt in the thermosphere that's over 2,000 degrees. I find myself looking at the moon and wondering why we never see satellites pass by the moon. 
Did you know there are thousands of miles of fiber optic cables under the seabed that supplies 90% of the Earth's communication, internet, phones, etc.? And GPS works off of cell phone towers. It's called triangulation. Haven't you seen those really tall towers and wondered what they are? Satellite TV is just enhanced radio using ground-based towers. It's all ground-based, just like the old TV antenna. Science fiction author Arthur C. Clarke proposed the idea of geostationary satellites in 1945 in a magazine called Wireless World. And 20 years later, in 1965, they claim to have successfully launched the first commercial geostationary communication satellite. Today, there are said to be thousands, but the odd thing is that trying to prove it only leaves you fruitless. Is outer space even real? Yes and no. What you see in the sky, as far as stars and wandering stars, also known as planets, are there. How could we deny them? We don't know what they actually are, but they are there. Now what we are told about outer space and what it is, is not true at all. Everything we believe about so-called outer space is due mostly to Hollywood movies and other media, including children's cartoons. Of course, NASA propaganda is the biggest culprit. As we have already gone over, there are no pictures of Earth, and even images of all the other so-called planets are computer-generated. NASA has gone on record numerous times stating that humans can't get past low Earth orbit. NASA's next spacecraft, already being built and tested across America, will do those things and more. This is the spacecraft that's going to take humans to explore uh, the solar system. It's the next big step for NASA in exploration. Called the Orion Multipurpose Crew Vehicle, or MPCV, this next generation spacecraft will enable America to explore beyond low Earth orbit. As we get further away from Earth, we'll pass through the Van Allen belts, an area of dangerous radiation. But Orion has protection. Shielding will be put to the test as the vehicle cuts through the waves of radiation. Sensors aboard will record radiation levels for scientists to study. We must solve these challenges before we send people through this region of space. The plan that NASA has is to build a rocket called SLS, which is a heavy lift rocket. It's something that is, that is much bigger than what we have today, and it will be able to launch the Orion capsule with humans on board, as well as uh, landers or other uh, components to, be, to destinations beyond Earth orbit. Right now, we only can fly in Earth orbit. That's the farthest that we can go, and this new system that we're building is going to allow us to go beyond and hopefully take humans into the solar system to explore. So the moon, Mars, asteroids, there's a lot of destinations that we could go to, and we're building these building block components in order to allow us to do that eventually. And unlike the previous program, we are setting a course with specific and achievable milestones. Early in the next decade, a set of crewed flights will test and prove the systems required for exploration beyond low Earth orbit. Low Earth orbit is supposedly between 99 and 1,200 miles away. The funny thing is that they say the moon is over 200,000 miles away. How did we make it so far in the 1960s and 70s if we can't do it today? Also, the International Space Station, just like everything else brought to us by NASA, is a fake Freemasonic hoax, completely fabricated and done with special effects models, pools, zero-g planes, and various other camera tricks. How is circumnavigation possible on a flat Earth? Very easily. You can travel east and west directions to ultimately end up right back where you started. The face of the Earth looks similar to that of a clock, in fact, clocks were most likely designed after the true appearance of our world. 
If you follow a compass east for long enough, you'll make a full circuit. Same thing if you travel west long enough. As we've already gone over, the flat earth map that was around before globes were, easily converts to a globe, so everything you believe you are doing on a globe is actually taking place on a flat earth. How come the moon is upside down in the southern hemisphere? This is another very simple explanation. When somebody is in the northern part of the earth, or on the northern part of the earth, they see the moon from this angle. When somebody is on the southern part of the earth, the moon looks like this. They're looking at it from this angle. They see it from the opposite angle, and that's all it is. Imagine you tape a picture of the moon in the center of your living room, right? Depending on where you are in the room, the moon will be seen differently. When pondering this question, keep in mind that the face of the moon never changes. On a spherical Earth, we'd expect to see other sides, but we never have. What about the seasons? The sun is close and small, and it circles around and above the flat earth in a spiral pattern on the Tropic of Cancer in the northern summer months, and then down in the Tropic of Capricorn in the northern winter months. So when the sun is further away from the North Pole, right, the center of the flat earth, it's winter in the north and summer in the south. Since the sun is smaller than we are told, and closer, it makes much more sense that we experience seasons in the first place. If the sun was 93 million miles away, and had a radius of over 400,000 miles, we would hardly experience temperature fluctuation as we do. What about gravity? Gravity is necessary in order for a spinning ball earth to work. People readily believe that you can't fall off of a spinning ball that's darting through outer space at speeds that you can't even comprehend, yet they will deny how much easier it is to stay on a flat surface that doesn't move. Gravity is a scapegoat for all that cannot be explained, and it has never been proven. The reason why things fall or float is because of density and buoyancy. If something is heavier than air, it falls. If it's lighter than air, it floats. Very straightforward. Your phone is denser than the air, therefore it falls when you drop it. Everything works because of density. No need to factor in imaginary components. Quote, the law of gravitation is said by the advocates of the Newtonian system of astronomy to be the greatest discovery of science and the foundation of the whole of modern astronomy. If, therefore, it can be shown that gravitation is a pure assumption and an imagination of the mind only, that it has no existence outside of the brains of its expounders and advocates, the whole of the hypotheses of this modern so-called science fall to the ground as flat as the surface of the ocean, and this most exact of all sciences, this wonderful feat of the intellect, becomes at once the most ridiculous superstition and the most gigantic imposture to which ignorance and credulity could ever be exposed. Thomas Winship, Zetetic Cosmogony. What about the Coriolis effect? They say that the Coriolis effect is a result of the Earth spinning and is responsible for the deflection of an object moving above the Earth, rightward in the northern hemisphere and leftward in the southern hemisphere. The problem is that things like hurricanes and water in the sink aren't always predictable and have been known to spin both ways in either hemisphere. Also, another contradiction that proves the Coriolis effect false is the fact that no flying machine above the Earth has to account for it. If a bullet that travels 1700 miles per hour has to account for the effect, then an airplane traveling at 550 miles per hour would definitely have to account for the effect. 
When you look for the answer, you'll find that we are told that since the atmosphere moves with the spin of the Earth, planes aren't affected. So why would bullets be? Especially when they go much faster than common airplanes. Why can't I see infinitely far? This is for the people that wonder why they can't see certain things that they believe they should be able to see if the earth was flat. I've been asked on numerous occasions, why can't I see Mount Everest from anywhere on earth? I've also been asked, why can't I see Spain from the east coast of America? Well, besides dirt, dust, dew, rain, fog, smog, smoke, clouds, mist, haze, snow, etc., your vision is limited by the vanishing point of your perception. Check your weather app on your phone and notice the visibility in your area. Is the flat earth a religious thing? Yes and no. I say this because I myself am not religious. I'd rather not have faith in something, but know the facts to the best of my ability. And the facts are that the curvature and motion of the earth have never been proven. The Bible without any doubt whatsoever supports the earth that's fixed in place. The book of Enoch, which is biblically endorsed and most likely belongs in the Bible, describes the flat stationary enclosed earth in great detail. Many religions and civilizations preceding Judaism and Christianity support a flat and stationary earth, such as the Babylonians, the Egyptians, the Mayans, the Norse, the Hindus, etc. This fantastic spinning globe earth is very new to the people of the world, yet most of us carry on as if the theory is unquestionable, and we've been conditioned to laugh when the flat earth is brought up. Whether you are religious or not, you can see the flat earth for yourself. Is the flat earth society behind the resurgence of the flat earth? No, the Flat Earth Society is designed as a containment unit. Gatekeepers that tell the truth about some stuff, but then lie about other things in order to make it appear ridiculous or steer you in the wrong direction. For instance, this is what FES has to say about gravity. In the Flat Earth model, gravity, rather than being a force, is the upward acceleration of the Flat Earth. The Earth always accelerates upward at 1g, which is equivalent to the gravitational acceleration in the round Earth model. Like the force of gravity, the Earth's acceleration causes several commonly observed phenomena in our daily lives. If that isn't the biggest turnoff, I don't know what is. The flat Earth argument has never died. It only died down. Real flat Earthers have always been among us. But it wasn't until late 2014, early 2015, when Eric Dubé started making a lot of noise about the Flat Earth conspiracy, and got people like myself on board. It took me 10 months of research before finally accepting the truth about where we live. Thanks to the many great Flat Earth researchers, content creators, and activists since then, more and more people are waking up to the massive deception every day. Are all scientists, pilots, and members of the government in on it? No, most scientists, pilots, and members of the government have been indoctrinated just as the rest of us have. When they work at their everyday job, they go about it as if the Earth is most certainly spherical. If indeed some of these people did know the earth is flat, they most likely wouldn't even speak out about it in fear of losing their job or ruining their reputation. The average scientist goes about everything they do with the spherical earth already factored in. For mainstream science, questioning our current model is a huge no-no. For pilots, computers do most of their work, not to take away from what they do because I personally appreciate it. And also, pilots often switch out at stops, making it difficult to understand the real layout of Earth's landmasses. 
As far as government members and politicians go, besides high-ranking officials at NASA, which isn't government at all, it's safe to assume that they are not in the know and they are not knowingly perpetrating this lie. Very few people compared to the population of the world are enlightened to the flat earth. NASA isn't the only space agency. Are all others in on it too? The answer is yes. Here's a short clip on what you need to know. The Vector, NASA's official logo. If you've ever looked at NASA's official logo, both their, their official insignia and their official seal, you'll see that the most prominent object in the, in the seal is a, a red swooshing object. They call that the Chevron or the Vector. If you ask NASA's public affairs office, that this symbology is featured so heavily in their insignia and seal, they'll give you what really amounts to the, the standard facile cover story for the unilluminated. They'll tell you that that is uh, a representation of a hypersonic wing design from the 1950s, um, which was the time the logo was created. Um, not exactly the case. Um, someone might want to ask the Russian Federal Space Agency, Roscosmos, that was formed in 1992, why they chose that same logo. And while you're at it, you can go ask the Chinese, who formed their space agency in 1996, why in the world they're using a hypersonic wing design from the 1950s as their official logo. Then you can ask the Japanese, the South Koreans, Taiwanese, Malaysia, Mexico, Iran, all of these countries, even Bulgaria. They all utilize the vector symbology in their space agency logos for their, their national space agencies. Um, it gets even deeper. You can go look at the individual manned program patches for NASA. The Mercury program, for example, uh, a blatant use of covert symbology. In every logo dealing with the Mercury program, you'll see what looks like a number seven in their logo. And again, NASA's official story is that they put this number seven there so that they could pay homage to the original seven Mercury astronauts, um, kind of forgetting the fact that only six Mercury astronauts actually flew into space because number seven never never did. Deke Slayton had a heart problem, so he, he didn't get to go up. Uh, so there were only six Mercury astronauts, yet there's a seven in every single logo. That's in the official mission and say, or official program insignia for Mercury, as well as the six individual mission patches carry this logo. And it carries on to the space shuttle program. If you look at the Apollo logo, the Apollo logo has a big letter A in it. At least that's what they want you to believe, but it's not. Again, that's just a simple way of explaining away the inclusion of this vector symbology in the logo. If you go to the space shuttle program, uh, the original space shuttle STS program patch is a triangular patch that, again, hides the use of the chevronic vector symbology. And that also goes for many of the STS specific mission patches. Uh, every single one of the International Space Station expedition patches carry the vector symbology. The Russian Mir Space Station used the vector symbology. That was their, their official logo. And you can even go f deeper and look at military industrial complex companies. Look at the logo on a company like Lockheed Martin, two vectors. Um, the XPRIZE logo, Ames Research Labs, U.S. Space Command, when you get into the military realm, the United States Space Command, their official logo is the vector symbol. And when you look at the military's individual space-specific programs, all of them, all of them deal with vector symbology in their official insignias. And the, the question really becomes, who or what are these people paying homage to? Let's look at NASA's Earthrise. Now let's look at JAXA's Earthrise. Do you believe this is real? Well then, who's responsible for this deception? You will find that the Jesuits and the Vatican have been intimately involved in all things space, including owning the earliest telescopes and to this day the largest owners of observatories and telescopes in the world. The Society of Jesuits have been actively spreading the heliocentric theory for 500 years, 
while trying to bury thousands of years of flat earth cosmology. The Jesuits are rulers of all powers that we are aware of and have been ruthless in their pursuit of world domination for centuries, no matter who is killed or what has to be done to establish a one world order out of chaos. They rule over or are deeply partnered with people like the Rothschilds and many other international banksters, secret societies, especially the Freemasons, as well as the Zionist Jews, and especially Zionist Jews in seats of power. They rule over all the alphabet agencies and government think tanks, including the NSA, CIA, FBI, Mossad, KGB, Roundtable, Committee of 300, Tavistock Institute, Lucius Trust Publishing, Bilderberg Group, and the Council of Foreign Relations including representative government and legislation like the U.S. Presidency, Congress, and the Supreme Court. Freemasons are also spread out all over the world to further the different agendas that serve this Illuminati elite. Why the lie? Their desire is to convince us that we are only one of a septillion other planets flying through infinite space. A septillion? Where do they get these numbers? A septillion has 24 zeros. They want us to think that we are nothing more than a cosmic accident caused by a big bang that took place 14 billion years ago. Again, where do they get these numbers? How one could draw that conclusion is unknown. They want us not to understand our origin and go on believing that life is meaningless. They want us to believe that alien life is real and that they created us. Look no further than ancient aliens for the propaganda. Not to mention countless shows and movies they program us with. What does it mean if the Earth is flat? It means that the origin of man is deliberately being covered up from us. Man, woman, child, you are being deceived on a massive scale. Flat Earth, enclosed Flat Earth, expansive plane Flat Earth, or even infinite plane Flat Earth with an infinite ceiling barrier, or possibly another plane of existence above us and below us. It means that this place was created that you were designed, you were crafted, you are special and with purpose. A purpose being hidden from you on purpose. We are supposed to know our world and our reason for being. We've been swallowed whole by this economic fiat money system that controls absolutely everything and fuels this manufactured reality. Most of us know that we are slaves, and it's no wonder we desire to escape through movies, TV shows, and video games that happen to also further our programming and mental conditioning. We were never meant to live like this, and knowledge of our flat earth is a step in the right direction. It's something that can't be taken from us. It's the fuel that we need to let these bastards know that we won't go down in ignorance. We will not willingly accept their one world authority that wants to rule over all mind and all matter. Embrace this flat world of ours and free your mind from the globalist mind control. It's time that we stand up for ourselves and our beautiful earth. All I wanna know is who's coming with me. Going up 
to outer space or maybe meeting other beings from another place have you ever wondered what it's like on other planets then you watch a science show and come to believe you understand it you feel empowered by the knowledge and you feel enlightened listening to bill nye and neil degrasse tyson but then you wake up and you start to see the obvious life is just a lie and this whole world ain't what we thought it was nasa's missions to the moon were never completed they just filmed them in a room and people believe it i used to wonder what it's like to be an astronaut now when i see them acting i can't help but to laugh a lot they give us cartoons and they claim that we live on a ball but it's flat and it's not moving or spinning at all why you lying to us man that's something that we want to know after that you're gonna have to pack up all your stuff and go History has been rewritten by winners of wars The Jesuit order, Khazars, Freemasons and more They pulled the veil over our eyes and it's time to awaken Through organized indoctrination our minds have been taken It's time we take our power back and we rescue our people The Vatican and the bankers are like Resident Evil They may have had the greatest plan that was ever concocted But Illuminati never thought that they'd ever be spotted They're manufacturing reality all in our heads They tell us if the earth is flat then we'll fall off the edge But if it is a spinning ball we won't fall off it then And gravity is our imaginary magic friend why is water always flat when unmanipulated why are pictures of the earth computer generated why you lying to us man that's something that we want to know after that you're gonna have to pack up all your stuff and go Still clear that you and the other space programs that are in operation are connected and are deceiving the entire world. More and more people are waking up every single day, and we are now able to see right through you. But what we really want to know is why are you lying? Sincerely, me and the great people of this earth. God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, 
Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. How it will change your life, first of all, when you understand it, is dramatic, to say the least. Will it change you from having to go to your job every day and the things that you typically do every day? No. But when this knowledge becomes more mainstream and these agencies are starting to be held accountable and you understand that they're all participating in this, not just the United States government, not just NASA, but China, Russia, India, all of them have space programs. They all have the same symbolism. They're all doing the exact same thing to their citizenry. And the first thing you have to understand about this is that the deception goes all the way to the top. And when I say all the way to the top, you have to kind of get rid of the notion that the people at the very highest levels are working together. The people that control the world are not, we're not against each other. There was never any such thing really as the Cold War. We're really not enemies with anybody else. This is all a facade that's being brought on for our benefit. But the people that are in power, that have all the money, the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, the Morgans, the on and on and on, these are the people that literally run the central banking system, which of course has permeated the entire world. And any country that tries to get away from it, their leaders are quickly assassinated. It goes on and on and on. So. You have to understand conspiracies a little bit to understand the magnitude of this deception. So why would they do this? Why are they trying to hide the fact that we are on an infinite plane uh, or on a flat earth rather than a ball? Well, the answer to that, there's a lot of answers to that, but in my personal opinion, if you isolate people into the idea that they're on a blue marble that's in the middle of a universe that is really insignificant and there's thousands or millions and billions of other worlds and possibly other civilizations, that makes most people think that we are insignificant and that we did actually come about as some sort of an accident. Now, when people believe that, their minds are much more malleable into being given the idea that there is no God, there is no creator, that all of this is just some sort of random happenstance. And because of that, that also gives the controllers this fertile soil to build other deceptions on. And it's all about control. Remember, it's not about money. Money is irrelevant. They print the money. Money is just something that you and I agree has value, but it really is just pieces of paper, right? <laughs> These people are printing the money. They can print money all day long if they want to, and they do. <laughs> so it's not about that, and it's not just about power either. It's about total control, mental, physical, spiritual, every way, shape, and form possible. And to wrap your head around this type of deception, whether you're religious or not, if you're religious, then you understand that this is Satan's plan all along. If you're not religious, then you need to understand that People are power hungry and they will do anything to gain and maintain this type of control. So I've kind of ranted on this a lot. So John and Jaron, if you would add into this for my relative and kind of elaborate on what I've said. I would just add that a lot of people don't realize it, but really the fundamental cornerstone of 
nihilism and really nihilism is sort of the most profound version of atheism really atheism is probably the most popular quote unquote religion at least in america and probably worldwide there's more atheists at heart because of one simple fact and that is this whole copernican principle or this big bang theory universe where the entire planet and even the galaxy are like a mere speck of dust and completely insignificant in the grand scheme of things so from that perspective if the earth itself is just nothing special in the grand scheme of things then how could anything that we do in our lives be of remote consequence whatsoever and so this whole mindset again is sort of the founding cornerstone of atheism and ultimately nihilism however when people realize that the big bang is a load of theoretical bollocks then it really changes this entire foundation of the world's perspective of this ultimately nihilist viewpoint and so even if you don't consider yourself religious that's probably because you've been affected by this culture that is ultimately nihilist yep well said and i think so obvious when you look at and bob you put it perfectly that just what the money system has done to this country and, and to the world really uh, in the book why a bankrupt america it said that the Federal Reserve pays the Bureau of Engraving and Printing approximately $23 for each 1,000 notes printed. So $10,100 notes, which is a million dollars, cost the Federal Reserve $230. So they then secure a pledge of collateral equal to the face value of the U.S. government. And that collateral is our land, labor, assets. And then it's collected by their agents, who are the IRS, not our agents. And by authorizing the Fed to regulate and create money, and thus inflation, Basically, Congress gave private banks power to create profits at will. That's what they do. It's all about making profits for themselves. And you have to remember how big of a conspiracy this is. This isn't talking about just the JFK thing or isn't talking about just 9-11. It's on an umbrella kind of system to where it is the biggest deception that there is. It actually exposes every other deception and nothing else brings down the power of the elite because it really exposes education, science, the economy, television, museums, universities. Think of all the things that have been fooled. I feel worse for the people that are out there building satellites, the people that are out there actually working for these space agencies, the people out there teaching in schools as professors, because they would all come to the conclusion eventually, once this gets out, that they've all been contributing to the lie. And that's gotta be the worst feeling that there is and that's why you have a hard time with the Neil deGrasse or a Bill Nye, these guys ever even considering that the earth might not be what they were taught because they understand if it's not, then their entire lives have been about promoting the lie. They are tool pieces for the elite, for the lie system. And it really destroys everything. And I'm a perfect example, John, of what you were talking about. When I realized religion had some things in it that didn't quite fit with my reality and I was done with it, I realized it was many lies there. I popped out of that and the one place that's there with open arms calling for you saying, we tell nothing but the truth, we're all about facts and evidence, is science. And I went there with my arms open ready to embrace them and said, oh, thank you, I'm so glad you're here because over there I was just getting lied to left and right and now I know science is the place to go. Now thank goodness I'm into research and things that I, I wanted to know everything about it. I, I wasn't comfortable in just saying, well now I realize religion's a lie. I'm just going to be scientific and promote science and just say the word science when anybody talks to me. It would have been really easy. I could have paraded myself around and been really Mr. Smart Guy and, and been able to debate Christians and would have been really easy for me. But instead, I decided to look into it. I wanted to know why is evolution real? Where is the evidence? Why are these things facts? How do they know the age of the earth? And the more and more I looked into it and the more and more I asked these so-called science backers, the more I realized it was another religion. And that's ultimately, and I was, I'll admit it, an atheist for probably six months. And thank goodness I looked into that science. But I notice out there all these other guys who are just making these debunk videos or calling us crazy. The difference between me and them is that they don't want to research it or they don't know how to research past the deception layer. I mean, you have to understand this is the biggest deception ever. It can never be let out. So if you're looking for, well, why does Jaron say this and you go look up Google or something like that and you just search it one time and don't try and look at any other sources besides the mainstream sources, then you shouldn't be surprised that you're going to get the exact answer you're looking for. 
that's only going to confirm what the elitists or what these people who are fooling us from the top down, what they want you to find. And then they go and make videos claiming these are evidence that we're wrong. And they say, well, these guys didn't even research it. If they would have looked it up one time, they would have found it. That's crazy talk. If you think we don't know the mainstream reasoning behind it, that we don't need to bring that up to people because anybody like you can go look it up and find that exact answer. That's not doing research. And this is a deception on the highest level that you need to go and dig deeper and look at different bits and pieces and put it together and come up with your own explanation. Because if you're just going to take what mainstream tells you and believe it, then go watch Fox News and enjoy what the mainstream wants you to enjoy. That's the way that they operate. So I just think when it comes down to people asking, how does it affect my life? No, well, I guess it depends on you. If you don't care that you've been lied to about everything from school, from kindergarten on, everything that you were taught in school was meant to get your mind into a certain frame of reference, to make you think about the world a certain way, to make you think about your parents, and to make you think about your friends, and to make you think about your government, all in a prescribed way to make the rich get richer and make you into a wage slave. If you don't care that that happened, if you're happy going to your nine to five job and you're comfortable in your belief about who your creator is, then it doesn't affect your life. For a lot of us, that is a pretty big deal. For me, it looks like 35 years of my life was completely wasted on a false existence that someone else decided to sell me. You know, I'm gonna spend the rest of my life exposing it.